So right off the bat, I want to tell you, I am not a fan of third-party controllers. So I thought, let's compare controllers today. We have a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and a Gully Kit Pro Controller for your Nintendo Switch. And let's try to answer the age-old question, can a third-party controller be just as good, if not better, than a first-party controller? Let's go to the unboxing. So what we have here is the Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro Wireless Controller for your Nintendo Switch. Also works on your PC, and it also works on your phone or iPad or portable device like that. Now Gully Kit claims that there's no dead zone on this controller and there will be no stick drift as well. It has Bluetooth, so it can hook up to your Bluetooth compatible devices. It has motion controls, a feature called autopilot gaming, which is something where you can program macros in. We'll get to more about that later. One of the cool features of this is that it's able to wake up your Switch, which not all third-party controllers can do. And of course, if you don't have Bluetooth, you can hook this up via a wire, which is USB-C. All the setups can be done on the controller with no app or software needed, and you can adjust the vibration setting to your liking. So let's get into the unboxing of this thing. What do you actually get? Well, opening it up right off the bat, you see you get this nice case. This is a plastic case, which protects your controller from dust and dirt. Right off the bat, the buttons feel nice, solid, not sticky. The joysticks feel okay, a little bit looser than I thought they would be. D-pad feels pretty good though. And these are clicky up here. The layout's a little bit crowded. All the buttons push nicely. This feels like it's a quality kit. And hey, it's charged. We could probably start playing right off the bat. Let's take a look at the back. So these back grips have a kind of mesh rubber coating on them so your hands don't slip. And then here we have the sync button and the mode button. But yeah, it doesn't feel too bad. Maybe a little bit light. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a comparison with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and just put it up against the Gully Kit Pro Controller. Do the buttons feel the same? How's the D-pad compared to the other one? What do the joysticks feel like? Since they're non-drift, do they feel a little bit different? Let's get into it. So right off the bat, you'll see the joystick placements are the same. The D-pad placements are the same as well as the button layout. Now your main differences on the button layout are going to be that the Gully Kit has a few extra buttons. The shoulder buttons and triggers. The Gully Kit is a little more clicky and a little more spongy, I would say, than the Pro Controller. And the grips are obviously different. The Pro Controller has a slightly different form factor than the Gully Kit as well. I think the Gully Kit is more comparable to the Xbox controller. And we'll get into that in a minute and compare those two. But as you can see here, these controllers are roughly the same size, though I would say the Pro Controller weighs a little bit more than the Gully Kit. Now to some people that might feel cheap, to others that might be a blessing because a lighter controller means longer playtime. Okay, so now let's compare to the Xbox controller. As you can see, the form factor is quite similar. Really, the main differences are the way the buttons feel on this controller feels a lot more like an Xbox controller than, say, the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. So if you're used to that Xbox controller, this might be a good option for you. And most notably, the D-pad. Now, the D-pad is going to be different because Xbox redesigned theirs fairly recently. But to keep in line with the classic standard Nintendo D-pad, I think that the Gully Kit went with the right choice and put the standard D-pad on there. Other than that, these two are pretty comparable in the way that they feel. Although, again, the Gully Kit is slightly lighter than the Xbox controller. So here I am playing Hyrule Warriors on Nintendo Switch. I tested this controller out for about three or four hours on this game, and I have a few things to say. First off, yes, the amiibo function works, as does the motion controls, you know, the gyroscope, and overall everything does function pretty much exactly how a pro controller should function. I do want to clarify that I haven't personally had problems with joystick drift in the past. I'm a retro gamer for the most part, so my joysticks don't go through the rigorous tests and trials and tribulations that maybe the standard modern gamer goes through. I do like playing modern games, but I go back and forth, so I use the D-pad a lot. But I wanted to test this out on a more modern game, just to get a feel of how this compares with the Switch Pro Controller. The only real difference I could feel was within the way the joysticks handled. They're maybe a little bit looser, but they play just fine. And once you get used to that looseness, it works really well. And like I mentioned before, you can use this controller to wake your Switch up, although it is a little different than your standard Pro Controller. And to do this, you just push the A button and then the Home button. So 
I have a confession. I don't play games very often on my mobile phone or my iPad that require a controller. Usually if I want to play a game that requires a controller, I play it on a console. However, because this had the functionality to run on an Android or an iOS device, I fired up my copy of Sonic the Hedgehog that I have on iOS and thought, let's give it a go. This is also a good opportunity to use the D-pad as well as use the joysticks because Sonic the Hedgehog allows you to use both and switch back and forth seamlessly. And I gotta say, it's not too bad. There was a little bit of lag, but I'm not sure if that's because of the controller or because that's just how this game functions. Because like I said, I'm not huge on playing these mobile games with a controller. I'd rather just play it on my console. But it does work, the functionality's there. And as you can see, I'm playing Sonic the Hedgehog just fine. Well, just fine for someone who isn't that great at Sonic the Hedgehog on mobile. But it does what it claims to do, and it was fairly easy to sync up. That's a win in my book. And also something that I'm not sure you can do on the Nintendo Pro Controller. So the final test I wanted to give it was, let's play some games on the PC. And I just happened to have this new NES game. It's called the Arm Wrestling Classic by Fista Games. But you're not here for that. How does it control? As someone who likes the D-pad a lot, this D-pad is pretty decent. I wouldn't say it's as great as the original NES controller, but Nintendo really hasn't done one as great as the original NES controller since maybe the Super Nintendo. However, this works pretty well and not something that I would be hesitant to use while playing anything. And one would have to assume if the D-pad works well, the buttons work well, they were easy to map, that these standard controllers would work just as well as they do on the Switch for a modern game. And hey, look, I won. Now one of the features I did not talk about was the macros. This is where you can program a set of button presses to do automatically with just the push of a button. It's supposed to make things like grinding easier or like complicated move sets like let's say on modern fighting games. However, as someone who is a retro gamer, I don't usually go for those kind of things. I like to play the games as intended, and so that's just something I did not get around to testing. I assume it works, as everything else has worked just the way that they've said it does, but it's just something that's not for me, so I really shouldn't have an opinion on it because it's not something I would use normally, and if I tried it, I wouldn't be an authority to tell you what I think about it. So what are my final thoughts? The Gully Kit is a really good controller, especially for a third-party controller. If you use the macros and things like that, I'm sure you'll get more than your value out of it. Is it better than the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller? That's debatable. Is it as good as it? Probably. It's very close. Kind of too hard to call, really. I like the Gully Kit a lot, but if it came down to either the Pro Controller or the Gully Kit, I'm gonna pick the Pro Controller. But that's just my bias. You might find the features of this way more useful than a Pro Controller. But as a retro gamer, I don't need those features in particular, but this is a perfectly good controller. So with that, I'll leave it up to you. And hey, I'm always happy to answer any questions just leave them in the comments, and we can have a discussion about controllers or anything other gaming that you're into. Until next time, see you soon!